Good morning and welcome to our worship this morning. Uh, this is Pastor Mark Shover, Faith United Methodist Church in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. And late last night, uh, we were kind of keeping an eye on the weather and it just sounded like it would be best to not do in person today. So we will do our best to, um, to bring you online worship today. We're just very thankful. This is Baptism of the Lord Sunday. It's a special day. Uh, in the life of the church, and I like to use it as an opportunity for us to remember our baptisms as well. So I'd like to share, um, this is the uh, baptismal covenant service that we use in our worship. It's part of our liturgy, and we always introduce uh, this service uh, with these words. So I'll share them with you this morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is offered as God's gift to us without price. And then I would like to share our uh, thanksgiving over the water. I really love this prayer. Uh, we use it every time uh, we celebrate a baptism. So let's pray together. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism and of his death and resurrection to make all disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin, to clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, <clears throat> that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. Amen. of prayer uh, together this morning. I just wanted to share a few things. Uh, we are in celebration today, a baptism of the Lord's Sunday. It's an opportunity for us to remember all of our baptisms and to be thankful. Uh, we do that throughout the year. We do our best to acknowledge uh, anniversaries of people's baptism, but today I think it's an opportunity for all of us just to revisit that and, and to celebrate that today. We're in the winter season. Certainly was much more like winter this past week, uh, much colder and 
we actually had some winter weather. We're experiencing that this morning. So uh, I just, uh, from what I can see, forecasted for the next week, it, it appears that more like winter weather is going to be with us for a while. So we're just thankful for all of the blessings and opportunities that this season provides for us and that we can share with the Lord and share with each other. We're just very thankful. I want to thank Warren. Uh, we're trying something completely new here this morning. So if this works, uh, I want to thank him uh, again for um, his hard work and providing online worship uh, for us each and every week. And today uh, we're trying something new to see if this works. So we're hoping it does. Uh, I want to share with you today, Bob Wilhide. Uh, Bob has been active in our church family for many, many years. He has a new home now. And we did uh, do our best to share that new address, new contact information uh, with you this past week. Bob now is at the Providence Place uh, up in Chambersburg. And uh, if you need his address, contact information, just let us know. And we'll be uh, happy to provide that for you. But we're just thankful. Uh, Bob has this new home now and we celebrate with him and just continue to keep him uh, in our thoughts and prayers during this time of uh, transition. Uh, we continue to be concerned about the pandemic. And again, this past week, I I just heard of many people that I know that have tested positive. Uh, Omicron, the current variant that is, uh, you know, we're concerned about right now is highly contagious, much more contagious than any um, previous forms of COVID that we've had to deal with. So, we just want to be very cautious right now, uh, even more so than we have in the past. And uh, we'll continue to uh, try to keep everybody updated as we journey through this. But we just are concerned, want to continue to keep uh, all of our healthcare people. We want to continue to keep them in our thoughts and prayers uh, during this very difficult time. And also, uh, first start, partnerships will be back in the classrooms uh, this coming week at the church. Uh, that's the plan anyway that um, that I received from them over the weekend. Uh, so we're thankful for that. But the other thing I want to share is with more and more people in our building, that does, uh, you know, put us more at risk for the opportunity of infection. So we just want to be very careful right now. And we want to continue to keep this in our thoughts and prayers. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer together. <clears throat> Lord, we're just very thankful for all of the gifts of today and to be able to have the technology that allows us to share together online when when conditions just uh, do not allow it to be safe for us to be in person. We're just thankful that we can offer that. I'm thankful for um, Warren and his skills and his willingness to help us with the technology to make it possible and it's so good that we can bap, uh, celebrate baptism today and we remember Jesus' baptism and we have an opportunity today on this special day to remember our own. So help us to do that and we're just thankful too for the winter season and all of the blessings and joys that this time of year offers to us, oh Lord. We're thankful for Bob Wilhide and you know his continued uh, to be part of our church family. Uh, we're just thankful for his life and ministry among us and just continue to be with him now as he transitions to a new place. Just continue to watch over him and and offer he, him your healing and wholeness, O oh Lord. And we continue to be concerned about the pandemic and we just pray that you keep all of our leaders uh, in, in care and in, in your watch, O oh Lord, and guide them and help them, and especially all of our healthcare practitioners, O oh Lord, as they continue to deal with this on the front lines. Just continue to be with them, O oh Lord, and help them and, and, and allow them to share your gift of healing. And just keep us in your spirit now as we journey through this week and we just ask, oh, Lord, you continue to help us to pray as you teach all your disciples all around the world how to pray with these words, oh, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. scripture uh, for today I did want to share that we want to thank Cindy Cindy came in and met with Warren uh, this past Wednesday evening and they uh, pre-recorded the music for today so uh, we could have that available we with everything going on right now uh, she was willing to do that so we do have some pre-recorded hymns so thank you Cindy for doing that with us today the scripture for this baptism of the Lord Sunday that was chosen for us comes from the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah. I'm in the 43rd chapter, and I'm going to uh, share verses 1 through 7. But now, o Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you, says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed, ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One, O Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. Do not be afraid for I am with you. I will gather you and your children from the east and the west. I will say to the north and the south, bring my sons and daughters back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. Bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Just be in prayer together. Oh Lord, on this uh, beautiful winter morning that you created for us, oh Lord, the weather may be not what we want, but every day is good in you. And we just give you thanks. And I ask, O oh Lord, uh, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together here today be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. This is an interesting uh, scripture to look at when we're considering baptism, but I wanted us to explore this Old Testament text today that was chosen for us for this uh, Baptism Sunday. I think it provides an opportunity for us to look at baptism in, in a little different way than maybe perhaps we, we most often do, since it is a very important uh, one of the two sacraments in the life of our church together. You know, I think I discovered the integrity of this scripture uh, at a very young age. Uh, when I was growing up, when we lived in Ellicott City, uh, I took swimming lessons. It was uh, my parents uh, thought 
thought it was very important for all of us to learn how to swim. And I can remember this summer I was at the Y taking swimming lessons. It was a two week course. And I remember that the first week of the training, we were away, we were on vacation. So I missed all of the first week, but I was able to jump in midpoint when the class was starting their second week. So um, I, you know, go to class and, you know, for me, it's the very first morning for the rest of the class. They had already had five full days. So by this time, the class was ready to go up onto the high dive and jump in feet first into the deep end of the pool for a first time experience uh, of deep water. Of course, I didn't have any of the benefit of the of the earlier five days of swimming like they did. But, you know, I was young and uh, just uh, got in line and one by one they jumped in and were, you know, asked to, to swim to the side of the pool. And, you know, of course, the the instructors were there watching. And when it was my turn, I went in. But when I got into the deep water, I didn't really know quite what to do. So I think I was just kind of uh, moving in every direction I can. It's kind of an interesting thing that we have an instinct to swim without really knowing it. I'm sure I didn't look much like a swimmer, but I think it was pretty obvious to the instructor that I needed help. And she was in the water quick to kind of guide me to the side of the pool. So I think, you know, that was kind of a, a funny story that, that my family liked to share for a long time after that. But, you know, it all ended well. It was my first experience in deep water. And really, if uh, nothing else, it kind of reinforced why it was important for me to learn how to swim at a very, a bit, at a very young age. This is uh, probably a unique text for us to consider on this Baptism Sunday. I'm sure most of the time we're thinking more New, New Testament when we think about uh, baptism. We kind of joke about it. Um, Jesus' baptism with John in the River Jordan, I'm sure, was a form of immersion baptism. In the United Methodist tradition, because we often baptize infants, that's just not practical. And we've been sprinkling for many years. And we kind of joke about that a little bit. Uh, we, as United Methodists, dry clean. At least that's the, the Baptists. Uh, they will tease us sometimes in saying that our baptism is really a dry cleaning. But really, it's not the water so much. It's what it symbolizes that is most important, and that's really what we put our emphasis on with Christian baptism. But I want us to think a little bit this morning as we're in the Old Testament today, and we're looking at these uh, words from the prophet Isaiah that baptism didn't yet exist uh, in the way we understand it. When Jesus and, and uh, John were in the River Jordan and Jesus was baptized, by John the Baptist, you know, it took it took a lot of years for our understanding of baptism to, to be developed. So really, you know, this was a Jewish baptism that was occurring. So I want us to just try to um, reflect on that a little bit. And, you know, if we think about it, if we think about it, the the people of God were always led through water, all through their history. In fact, if you think back just a few moments ago when I shared the Thanksgiving over the water, that beautiful prayer that we use as part of our baptism liturgy together, it, it emphasizes this. In fact, I'll just go back and look at a few of the, you know, phrases that are in that prayer. You know, it emphasizes the fact that um, in the beginning of creation, that Jesus created the dark waters. And he swept across those dark waters and brought forth light. And you remember the story of Noah. It was through 
the ark and through the flood that we were saved through that uh, part of our faith, uh, salvation history of water. And after the flood, you know, a rainbow was set in the clouds to remind us of God's love. And then uh, during the Exodus, you know, freedom, part of the freedom that was uh, shared with the slaves was through the water, was through, you know, the sea. And then finally, when the children of those slaves were to enter the uh, promised land, they crossed the River Jordan. So it was through that uh, crossing of the Jordan into the promised land again that God leads people through the waters. And it even mentions, you know, Jesus being nurtured in the water of Mary's womb. So, you know, the gift of water is just something that we as the people of God have been connected with since the very beginning. And it seems that, you know, a significant part of our salvation history is through water. And if we think about it, I think for most of it, it's, you know, water is either a love-hate relationship. You know, we either love the water, we've learned to swim, and we enjoy, you know, being in the water in the summertime, you know, when the climate and weather's right. We may like going to the beach or other places that we can swim. Or, you know, I think there's many of us that just uh, fear the water so much we don't want to be anywhere near water. And I certainly have known uh, a lot of people like that. To, you know, the, so I think water has that tendency in part of our life journey. It's something we can enjoy, but at the same time, it's something that we certainly have to respect. And water is something that can bring about danger and fear. In fact, if we think about the, the people of God, the Hebrew people, and the part of the world in which they lived, it was a very dry uh, part of the world. The climate was uh, dry, you know, almost desert-like. So, you know, quite likely people didn't have swimming lessons like what I was able to to experience as a young person. I don't think many people in Jesus' day really um, enjoyed water as much as we did. And I think water was often fear, especially deep water. And certainly we have biblical references where the oceans were feared. And this is part of the imagery that we're looking at today from this prophet Isaiah. Because he tells us that through deep waters, that God will be with us. And through the rivers of difficulty, we will not drown. So, you know, those are very encouraging words. But as we are kind of focused on baptism today, I want to invite us to look at the water of baptism a little bit differently than I think the way we normally look at it as a cleansing agent, which it really is. And our understanding of baptism is, uh, you know, gives us the uh, imagery of the grace of God, which is certainly cleansing to our spirits. But this scripture uh, gives us the invitation to look at baptism and those waters in a little bit different light. The other, um, the other thing that I want to lift out of this is if we Look at these words the, the prophet gives us. There's also this community sense in this where people are gathered from all directions and there's this sense of community in this, uh, you know, this comfort that God gives us. And this is certainly part of what we celebrate in baptism when we become part of the uh, community of the church. As you remember, the introduction to our baptism and service that I shared with you just a few moments ago reminds us that baptism is the entrance or introduction into Christ's holy church. So it be, it's really the introduction for us, the opportunity for us to be part of a community that will help us. So God helps us through the community of faith. And that's the other image that we get out of this uh, text that we're looking at this morning, which I think is very important. 
If you remember a couple of months ago, the last baptism that we celebrated as a church family together, Lee Hardman. Lee was baptized back in October. And if you remember, that was a whole congregation event that morning. And everybody participated in that, that we made a promise to God, you know, that, um, you know, certainly um, Travis and Dawn and their sponsors made a promise to God to raise Lee in the faith. But you and I also made a promise to raise him in the faith so that we're part of that together. And that's why a baptism service can never really happen in isolation. It has to happen in the community of faith because we're all involved in that. And that's a very important part of what we celebrate in this uh, experience of baptism that we're focused on today. So it's not only that God is with us, but it also symbolizes that we are with one another as well. And you know, for the last month or, or, or so, we've been emphasizing the UMCOR advance because many, many people in our country have been experiencing uh, significant disasters. I just saw, just saw on the news yesterday that the month of December in the United States set an all-time new record for for disasters. The way the weather's been has just been uh, unbelievable, and a lot of people suffered, uh, you know, very damaging consequences from that. Uh, many people lost loved ones. And many people lost uh, all of their property. Others lost significant property. So, you know, it. we have the ministry of UMCOR, which we've all been connected with for many, many years. But what UMCOR really shares with people is part of this baptism, this community of faith. Because what we're really sharing with people in this very difficult time is that you're not alone. That not only is God with you, but we are with you too. And that's really what the, the ministry of UMCOR is all about. That we're willing to share some of our financial resources to help others. And I know many, many of you have done that. And I just want to thank you for that. That's a, a blessing. But, you know, I, I know that you, uh, like me, just receive uh, many blessings when we have the opportunity to give like that and to help others. And that's really what our baptism symbolizes as well. So this is just a blessing that we can enjoy today. Um, let's just use this as an opportunity to not only reflect on Jesus' baptism, but our own and what that means. And also these uh, images that the prophet Isaiah gives us today that offer, you know, offers an opportunity for us to look at baptism in, in perhaps a little bit different way. Amen. Oh, you know, the little story I shared earlier, um, I think sometimes, though, uh, I learned this, and maybe I learned it the hard way uh, when I went into the deep waters without really having uh, the training or the experience of swimming, I do really think in life sometimes the best way we learn, though, is that we just take a leap, a leap of faith, and we just jump in. And, you know, I think a lot of times that really is just uh, part of what life's all about. So, you know, we have an opportunity now. We're bringing our worship to a close, but really, you know, worship is just beginning because we have a, a whole new week ahead of us. And, you know, I think God is inviting us all just to kind of take a leap of faith and jump into this new week together, not really knowing what this week's going to bring. But, you know, we have a practically a whole new year ahead of us as well. And after having an opportunity today to remember our baptisms and to be thankful, we can all jump into this new year together, too, as a. Uh, a leap of faith, and we don't really know what this year is going to bring, but we know that we have these wonderful words that that Isaiah shared with us today, that when we enter those times of deep water, when we 
when we experience those difficult times in life that God will certainly be with us and the people of God will be with us. And that we can celebrate today. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we're just thankful for the blessing of the rich. Uh, many, many, many um, facets of understanding of what baptism really is and the the many images that come to mind this morning. And we're just thankful for the opportunity to be part of your family, the church, and this gift of water that's offered to us. And send us now out, not only into this new year, but into this week to come, to follow you, O oh Lord, and to continue to share all the good things that you share with us. Mm -hmm.